And so the uh, journalist wanted to make it clear to their leaders that the war has been declared against Germany. And they wanted one person. Because this question was reason in people's mind, the readers, who is wanted? Why is this poster? Why is he wanted? Dead or alive? Why? And who wants him? Those so three questions, and the poster were answered. <clears throat> who is wanted? That was Adolf Hitler. Why was he wanted? Before I say why he was wanted, let me jump to the third question. Who wanted him? That's the British leaders. They wanted him. So why was he wanted? The poster expressed clearly that he was a murderer. He murdered people. Two, he kidnapped people. Three, he was wanted for theft. He told so many things. Four, he burned properties, buildings, whatever you have, he burned them if you wanted. He murdered him so many people, <coughs> especially uh, from his own country, Germans. The poster went on describing why he wanted he was wanted. He killed many politicians, opponents, who was picked and driven to the concentration camps, and there they died. He killed many Czechs. He also called homicide of citizens of the British Empire. Especially, this was the major reason he was wanted. And so the poster was there to reinforce that desire, the resolve to catch him and to show that he is an enemy, a common enemy to everybody. So he needed to be fought against. So now, wanted, dead, or alive, does not mean They needed to announce that he could be picked, but it was to encourage the citizens of Britain because they were dead afraid. So many people died in their homes because of, his, of uh, Hitler's people who went there, who invaded uh, even Britain. Do you think they actually uh, wanted Hitler only, or they wanted the system? Read the system. Because Hitler, as an individual, he could not stand for all those countries. He could not make Britain, France, join effort to come and fight an individual. He was growing. He could have the whole Europe, eventually the whole world. So, Hitler was wanted, but he wasn't afraid. People were told to obey him and follow him. This includes another uh, Lutheran pastor. His name is Martin Nimlo. He was told to follow Hitler publicly 
and to obey him. But uh, Nimrod said, be eaten unto you, or he to that, you are not my guide, but God is my guide. <coughs> this way Nimrod was setting a line of demarcation between loyalty he had of God and Hitler. He drew a line of demarcation, knowing that after mentioning that, his, day, his head will be required of him. Yet, he not shiver. He chose to give out his head than to give out his right he had of eternal life. Dead or alive, Nimla knew he was needed. He was wanted. Yet, he chose to die and to lose eternal life. Amen. Christians, I want us to read Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. If you get it, please read it for us. I want to help. I, want, I need your help. Uh, excuse me. Sound people for this one, please. When who is going to read? If you're ready, thank you. Um, verse 4. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. Thank you very much. John says, then I heard another voice, meaning he had heard many voices. But this time he said, I heard another voice from where? The other voices he heard, he saw the speaker. He could say, the first angel talked to me. Second angel appeared. But this time he says, then I heard another voice. A voice from heaven. Whose voice was this? Put a question mark on that. Saying, come out of her, my people. For the great Babylon, her, it's the great Babylon. Uh, before you continue here, I will need someone else to read Revelation 14. Revelation chapter 14, I think verse 8. Maybe I'll be moving around because we don't want to. A Revelation chapter 14, verse 8, what does it say? And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Thank you very much. Why should we, the people of God, come out of Babylon? That's the next question, and that verse has answered it. Why should we come out of Babylon? Another question. They said, great Babylon, what is this great Babylon? Ask a question under, underneath. If there's a great Babylon, there must be a smaller Babylon, or a Babylon for that matter. Then, I have a whole series of questions. Another question is, we come out of Babylon, we go where? We go where? Let's start from the first question. <clears throat> uh, 
another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Whose voice could this be? Whom do we belong to? You are free to answer me. Whom do we belong to? God. So, who is this daring to say, my people? Then this voice is coming from who? Thank you. The voice is coming from God. Next question. Come out of her, the great Babylon. Before we define who the great Babylon is, let's see if there is another small Babylon. Because if there's no small Babylon, then there's no need of saying great Babylon. There's a comparison. Yes. There was a Babylon, not smaller Babylon, but there was a Babylon, a country whose, whose king was Nebuchadnezzar. Do you remember that? Yeah. And that Babylon, one thing that you remember of it, it captured Jerusalem, and took, is, it took the people of Judah into captivity to Babylon. And you remember Daniel and his three companions being selected among the captives to live in a royal palace and be educated according to Babylonian education and be magicians some time later. When they reached there, the first thing they did was King Nebuchadnezzar gave them names according to his gods. Well, who can remind me the name of Daniel? Belteshazzar, thank you. How about the other guys? Do you remember their names? Shadrach, Meshach. There you go. Those names are names of the gods of Babylon. And so, the children of Judah were baptized into that ocean of people to worship the gods of Babylon in such a way that they could carry their identities. Even their names were the names of their gods. That's the definition of the small Babylon. And time came when God was not happy. He wasn't happy. When Daniel prayed hard, it took him three weeks before God could answer. God answered immediately when Daniel knelt down to pray, but Satan intercepted the answer. The angel was sent to, uh, to, to give the answer to Daniel, was intercepted by the power of Satan. Because the children of Israel were supposed to succumb under the gods of Babylon. But God did not want. And Satan fought to the best of his ability. And not that that would take one second. It took 21 days to reach Daniel. This Revelation had a package of messages. One of them that I'm going to focus on was that his people are given 70 years and then to be delivered from Babylon. The first call, maybe not the first call, but one of the calls because Abraham was called to come out of Chaldea from Babylon to a country that God will show him. That was the first call. But now I'm focusing on the call that was given to Israelites, or rather Judas, to come out of Babylon and go back to Jerusalem and rebuild their city. And so, this call of Revelation chapter 18, verse 4, is not new to God. It's a common language. The smaller Babylon grew and all the nations around it 
were worshiping other gods rather than the God of their maker. So it's growing in worshiping idols. Except these days, our world doesn't worship idols, does it? Do you think it does? <coughs> Children of God, answer me. Does the world today worship idols? Yes. Then, <coughs> it's no longer, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, where's my boy, Daniel? I need water. Now, is the world, size-wise speaking, as small as the Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar? Yes or no? Are you doubting? You can look at the map in the Middle East. Is it as small as the, 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 uh, the Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar? No, yes. How many of you... Please use your hand. How many of you say, yes, it's the same size? You can show with the hand. Oh, thank you, Mama. Thank you very much. How many of you will say that it's as small as the small Babylon of, of Nebuchadnezzar? How many of you, how many of you will tell me it's bigger? Yes, it's big, more than 10 times. It's the whole world. So now, Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar is known of worshiping idols. Now it has grown up to bigger Babylon. That's why the whole world is called Great Babylon. And so God told the people, the Judas, who are in Babylon in captivity, to come out of it. Come out of it. You can read in Jeremiah chapter, um, I think, 51, verse 6, or Isaiah chapter 48, verse, I think, 15, some, or 20. Isaiah 48, verse 20. It says, come out of it, my people. Come out of Babylon so that you don't partake of their sins and their consequences. Because I'm going to destroy it. So that's the call. And this call is being repeated now. God himself, the one who told the children of Judah through the prophet Jeremiah to come out of it. Now, thank you, sweetie. Now, the same voice was heard by John. God himself saying, come out of it, my people, the great Babylon. This whole world. The question is, who is being told? I know you're answering me, the children of God, which is true. That's the right answer. But also, let's be a little bit analytic. God is talking to, to his church. You. God is talking to the church. But also, God is talking to individuals. Talking to individuals. Let's talk about the church. Uh, let me see. How many minutes will you give me? Uh, an hour? No. Uh, 30 minutes? No. 20 minutes more? Oh, no hands. I stop now. Yes? How many minutes? Okay. Say 20. Let me see if I will be able to, uh, to, to respect it and I will try my best. So, for the interest of time, as he said, for the interest of time, remember when Moses was in the wilderness with the children of Israel.
there are some three families that rebelled against God. Who can remind me the names? Speak up, one person. Uh, can I see a hand? I'm giving you a microphone so that everyone can hear. I think I only know two, Dathan and Korah. And Abiram, yes. And Abiram, thank you. What did God do? He told Moses, his very voice told Moses to tell the assembly, to tell the assembly of God. To leave their tents, not to leave those people individually, but to leave their dwelling place. Assembly is the same as a church. So God is talking to you. And he's not saying that you leave a person but stay closer to his house or her house. No. He's saying, leave not only the pastor, but their dwelling place. Leave them. And I'll show you the glory, my glory. And Moses told them, in their face, the earth opened and they swallowed them up. They never saw them again. Dead or alive, God doesn't need to say that. Because he doesn't give money to someone to go search for a criminal. He has that criminal in his hands. All he needs to say is, come out of her, my people. So that you don't partake of their sins. God is talking to a church. You can read lists from Numbers chapter 19, verse, I think, 23 and 24. Not too sure. You will see that story of those three Hebrew families. Church of God, you are being called to come out of her. Amen. Come out of her. God is calling individuals. He's calling individuals. You remember what God did when the Lord Jesus was with angels visiting Abraham. Let alone three angels went to Sodom and Gomorrah. And to cut the, short, the, the story short, because I have no more 20 minutes, he told Lot at the door. He said, you and your household go out of here. But before that, he said, do you have, tell all your sons who are in here. Tell all your sons who are in here. Tell all your daughters, sons in the laws, daughters in the laws, your relatives, your friends. Tell them to come out of here. Individuals. You are being told. We are being told. You are being told to come out of Babylon. Come out of Babylon with your children. Come out of Babylon with your wife and husbands. Come out of your, your ba Babylon with your in-laws, with your sisters, brothers, parents. Come out of Babylon. Before it's forever. Too late. Because Babylon is wanted, dead, or alive. Come out of Babylon. And the time is as short as that one that was given to Death and Bilam and Korah. For God, the warning is immediate. When Mrs. Lot was moving slowly and with the heart behind in Sodom and Gomorrah. 
she became a member of Sodom and Gomorrah, and that was the whole end. Friends, time is now. Not tomorrow? No. Not tomorrow? No. Not in the evening. Not uh, right now is about 15 minutes to 12. Not in those 15 minutes. Time is now. Now the question is, where should we go? Where should you go? The assembly of, 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 of Israel were told by Moses to move from those people. They are doing places. And they went aside at a distance. So where do we go from the world? Where shall we go? Is God confusing us? God says in Matthew, Chapter 11, verse 28, someone to read it, Matthew 11, 28. And Jesus said, come unto me. If you have it. Matthew 11, verse 28. If you have it, put up your hand, I will give you the microphone. And you read in the hearing of everybody. Thank you. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Come to me. Come to me. Okay. How then do you go to God? Where is God here in this world? I'm here. I'm with my neighbors. If I go here, I'm with the people of the world. If I go here, I'm with the people of the world. Where is God? How do I get him? How do I get him? How do I separate myself from Babylon? How? It's a good question, right? Now, Jesus how the answer. He says, no servant will serve two masters. No servant will serve two masters. Either serve one, serves one and hate the other. Loves one and hate the other. That is, I think I have the verse. I don't remember it. Mm. When I get it, I will tell you. Another one. Jesus said, He who is not for me is against me. Do you remember that? He who is not for me is against me. So then, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. The world says you're wanted dead or alive. And the threat from their side just says, God says, if you are not for me, you are against me. How do I survive? Which master should I serve? The answer is simple. Martin Nimlo drew a demarcation line between loyalty, his loyalty to God and to Hitler. We need to draw a line of demarcation. You need to draw that line of demarcation without thinking of the threat that you're receiving, dead or alive, you're wanted. Because in Isaiah chapter 40, 
3, verse 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 and 2. Get it, please? Get it? Isaiah chapter uh, 40, uh, 43, verse 1 and 2. If you have it, I need to see your hand. Yes. Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you, says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. That's your name. When you go through the deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Elder. Isn't it an assurance? Isn't that an assurance, friends? Are you now ready? Are we ready to draw a line of demarcation? For the power of God, the mighty God, is with us. Even in war, war will not down us. The Israelites, when they were traveling from Egypt to Canaan, before they reached the, uh, the, the wilderness, they were facing the Red Sea. And the hand of God that was with them separated the water, and they walked on a dry land. That's the God who is telling you, Fear not, for I'm with you. Some God, who was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the furnace of fire in a valley of Jewel, and the fire did not set us abreast, did not burn them, not even the smoke reached them. That same God says, I am with you. Now is the time, whether wanted the dead or alive or not, to draw a line of demarcation. Now is the time. Friends, as individual, now is the time. Friends, as a church, now is the time for tomorrow may not be ours. May God help you to draw the line of demarcation, to be loyal to the mighty God and inherit eternal life. In Jesus' name. We are going to sing song number one, what? One, huh? 460, my memory. Thank you. We shall start. 